Good morning. Are you out there? Hey, it's Mark with uh, Redo Over. Playing some Kingdom Rush Original this morning. I've got Forsaken Valley coming up. Iron Challenge on Veteran Mode. We're going to use... Uh, let's see. We're going to recycle back to the start of our heroes. We've kind of made our way through all of them. I was doing some sort of special archer-only challenges, and I was using Bolin Farslayer for one and Illyria for the other. Let's jump back to Gerald Lightseeker. Prepare for glory. Prepare for glory. Excellent. All right, let's jump in here. Forsaken Valley. Yeah, here we go. Iron Mode. We have not done any difficulty of Iron Mode. We're going to do it on Veteran. The rules are upgrade level 5, which is max. Hero, we've got Gerald. Awesome. No archers, no artillery. So this is interesting. Very restricted. Barracks, mages only. I don't think it'll be too difficult. I could be wrong. It's a single mega wave to battle. Now, normally, whenever I do Forsaken Valley, all the armored guys come on the right side. You use mage towers for them. And all the demons come on the left side. You use archer towers for them in general. Because demons are magic resistant. So, this time, though, let's see. We got marauders, dark knights, bandits, wolves, gargoyles, dark slayers, and brigands. Marauders, Dark Knight, Bandit, Wolf, Gargoyle, Dark Slayer, Brig... Oh. Okay. No demons. So, it would tell us if there was. We got 2,000... No, 2,600 gold. That is a lot. We got one life to live, kids. We got a, a cup of hot coffee here. Just mm, it's hot. It's delicious. Cream and sugar, the way you should drink it. And one mega wave. So, this is good, actually. Um... I would propose we just use, move Gerald up here, forever. throw in some backstop, barracks, because these mage towers are going to cut oh through these armored magic. guys, no problem. So I say we just Light ring job. the whole thing. We have enough money to put a I'm mage a tower everywhere. Like a charm. Everywhere, oh everywhere. I put a Yay! So much like money! How much money? And this will take care of any flying guys like gargoyles. You, you know, this will just eradicate them, so I'm not sweating that in the slightest. Let's upgrade those barracks each to one the second tier footman. Let's give them a little stop in power. There's no infernal combustion because there's no demons, which is good. But this will just make them hold up a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get a couple of these towers upgraded here. Let's see how far we can take them. Boom. That's good enough. We'll save the 80. Start the wave. Um, I'll throw my reinforcements off to the side here. Give them maximum survivability. They'll just throw their spears all day long until they despawn after however many seconds. I don't know how many seconds. I should count it. Let's see here. Put them in. Counting. Freedom. Still counting. Twenty-two. I got twenty-two, so I think it's twenty seconds. If I had to count in my mind while playing the game. All right, we can go higher. So, you know, I was just thinking we could do sorcerer mages, but that that debuff against um. Physical damage does no good. So really what we should do is we should build up these guys back here so they can debuff when our when the like dark nuts and stuff get to our barracks and Gerald. That's what we should do. I haven't done this wave in years, like this stage challenge, so I have no idea what to expect, quite honestly. But this looks good. Seems seems easy enough. We're just cutting them to ribbons so far. No challenge whatsoever thus far. We could always add a little summon elemental, little earth elemental if we need it. Summons an earth elemental, stout avatar of the land's power to block and attack your enemy. I like that. But the other great thing about uh, the sorcerer mage is that it doesn't really tell you anywhere easily is that they can debuff armored guys. So if you get like a Dark Knight coming through with high armor, it can knock him down to medium. 
Very handy. Okay, Wolf's coming. I don't think Wolf's have any magic. Yeah, no magic, no armor. These guys will just get incinerated. So far, this is very simple. Which is good. It was a short video. I would love a short video. All my videos are like 40 minutes long, because I'm like playing through like three or four times, losing. And then people watch like the first like two minutes of it, which is okay. I didn't expect people to watch uh, an hour-long show of me fiddling around with this game. <laughs> War Wolves. Jesus, so I guess the waves they were listing off are just like, each section is just like mega waves, just tons and tons of bad guys. Can we handle them? I'm going to put in reinforcements in the back just in case some wolves come through. Ooh, that worked. Hmm, glad we did that. Okay, here are a bunch of brigands, lightly armored. Medium armor? Medium. These guys won't get there. The wolves got through because of their speed. They were able to rush past the towers, but these guys will get annihilated by these mage towers. Which is good. Alright. Throw in a couple more reinforcements. Throw some... Uh... And then let's start upgrading these mage uh, towers. Or these adept towers to mage towers, because it more than doubles their damage output. Let's see, my adept towers are doing 11 to 20. But the, or sorry, the mage tower does 11, 20, the adept tower will do 27 to 50, so that's way more than double down. Way more. So, uh, just get more bang for the buck. Click all these up, and it'll make short work of these, uh, these fools. I pity these fools. Something I say, I pity these fools. I invented that. Pretty cool. This is an absolute tin can massacre. That's what I call the armored guys. They're like tin can armor. Yeah, it's it's tin foil to these mage towers. Just shooting right through it. There's just no chance. No chance for them. It's great. I love it. Love it. I love to see my enemies uh, it destroyed. Yeah, by magical means. And also in fire. Speaking of which, rain of fire. Just yeah, because we can. <laughs> it's just sitting there. We're not even using it. We don't really even need it. We probably don't even need Gerald Lightseeker on this level. This is really easy. Let's see. We can take the Adept Tower to the Wizard Tower. It's not double damage, though. But it's better range, so might as well do it. Yeah. Let's get some crazy range going here. Boom. Let's do as much as we can do. This is pretty fun. It's nice starting with 2600 gold. It helps. If it was 1600 gold, we may have to think our way through it a little more, but this is, like, total breeze. I think there's still Dark Knights coming, though. We have not seen them yet. More Marauders. Medium armor, no problem. Six, uh, six and six on each side, followed by Brigands. It won't matter. These Mage Towers are just roasting these guys. Punching right through that armor like it's nothing. Because it is nothing. The magic attacks completely negate all the armor. It, it just bypasses it as though it wasn't there. Ooh, and now you see the debuff. Dropping it from medium armor to low, so it takes the armor down one tick. Which makes our Barox guys much tougher. Okay, here we go. Dark Slayers. How many are we getting? Two and two, followed by Dark Knights. So this would be, again, not a challenge because our Mage Towers... The armor is invisible to them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't help these guys at all. I wouldn't be surprised if none of these guys even made it to our back line. There's a bunch of marauders coming. Let's keep taking these towers up. So everything is at a tier 3 or higher now. Oh, I guess we can improve our barracks in the back. Just because. Let's give them some survivability. Yeah. This is awesome. We're just slaughtering them. Slaughter. Is that it? Is that all you... Oh! I think this guy's gonna last long. <laughs> bye bye! Magma Elemental. Not for the win. He will. You know how slow this guy is? This is veteran mode. I'm not cheating. They're just playing stupid. What do you want me to say? Okay, here we go. Dark Slayer's coming in four and four. 
with and then Dark Knight's backing them up. Okay, that's fine. Ain't gonna help. Here, let's do, uh, yeah, let's just start taking it to Arcane Wizards, because we can. This is like the most beefed up Mage Tower level I've seen. It, I've, I've done like uh, this many Mage Towers, but never like all to this level. There's so much coin. So much coin. <laughs> Dark Slayers are doing a good job on our guards, that's for sure. Let's take them up to Pallies. That's right, if you thought they were tough before, now they're more tough than before. Ooh, there's a lot of Dark Slayers coming. 10 and 10? Wow, no, 12 and 12? <gasps> no, 11 and 11. Uh, okay. Let's give them the Shield of Valor, just so that they have high armor. Our pallies, I like that. No mercy! Is that what they say? That's very charitable of them. No mercy! That's ruthless. You know, I heard something interesting, like on YouTube, watching some sort of like history-esque thing, that the Templar Knights back in the Crusader days would give letters of credit, which essentially, this would be for like English or French knights that were going to go to fight in the Middle East in the Crusades, right? Oh, that was easy. So here's the thing. The idea of a letter of credit was you'd take all your money, you're a knight, you give it to the Templar's order, the church there in France or wherever, in Europe. They'd give you a, a letter of credit, like just a, a signed off thing, a piece of paper. You'd go to the Middle East and you'd turn it in there for coin there to spend. So that you didn't have to make the, the dangerous journey with your money, your gold and your silver. And so it was like the first kind of banking, right? This is back like 1300, 1400, you know, so like... Dark Ages, whatever, Middle Ages. But I just realized, if you died in the Middle East as a crusader, which many of them did from disease, or just on the journey there, or in battle against the, the uh, people in the Middle East they were fighting, the other religion, um, then what happened to the, the Letter of Mark would just die with you, or go down with the ship, or whatever... And all the money you left in Europe just now belonged to the Templar order. It was like a sort of religious, you know, military order. And so they just got insanely rich. And then when you think about how long the Crusades lasted and how many Crusades there were, like there was Crusade after Crusade, every generation would send Crusades. These guys were just raking in the wealth for the guys. It was like, give us all your money, and if you make it there, you, you'll get money back. But if you don't, it's our money, right? So the, it was a military-industrial complex in, in the sense that they wanted you to die because they already had your money. So if you died, the money was theirs. They never had to give you the exchange of money on the other side in the Middle East or vice versa. If you were ever to come back, you'd come back with a letter of mark and you'd get your money back. But most of the guys never came back. So they it just behooved the church and the, the religious orders to just constantly send thousands of men to their deaths. So, the more you know. That's it. Thanks for watching.